Good morning, everybody. My name is Vishnu Dutt, and in today's session, we are going to talk about uh, the real concepts, right? It doesn't mean that yesterday whatever we learned was not real. Actually, we were talking about analogy, right? What uh, we have talked about post office and how it works, and believe me, we are going to uh, showcase you here that most of the concepts whatever we are going to study uh, are taken from there i am not saying take uh, literally taken from there but yes you will find uh, a lot of similarities between the post office or the post service with computer networks right because at the end of the day the aim is clear that we need to send the message from one place to another place right so if i remind you yesterday's session we all know for the fact that we need somebody to create the message. We all know about it, right? And in yesterday's session, Anjali created the message, right? The second point was, once the message is done, we need an address on top of it so that anybody can read the address and deliver it, deliver it right? Third thing, uh, we also uh, want to check whether Mr. Rahul is there or not at the destination, right? Although it is not possible in the postal service, but we came to know that it is the important thing to check the presence of the receiver, right? And at last, we need a complete system who can deliver this message or envelope on the basis of the address. We all know about this, right? It's as simple as that. But now, this is what we discussed. This is what we have created our modules to send a particular message from one computer or uh, one person to other person, right? We have almost three modules which we discussed about it. And it is always better to divide a complex problem into multiple pieces so that we can understand better, right? Similarly, believe me, in the era of 1975 or 1970 to 1980, Computers were there and there were many people trying to solve this problem and now we are going to discuss their uh, Their state of mind. What do they think at that point of time, right? And <clears throat> It is very very easy it means if we have gone through yesterday's session that was not even the session number one That was session number zero, right? If you have if you haven't gone through it that video is already on the YouTube as well as on my site the upcoming videos are going to be on my uh, website bridgeby.com and i am pretty sure that everyone here who is attending the call has not joined that because i could see that there are 40 45 users the new user with cisco.com join but as i see that there are more than 125 people here so if you can join right it is going to be good because i can give you the free access of the site right so let's talk about what you are going to learn over next two to three hours right i'm not sure whether this class is going to be three hour long or two and a half hour long it is going to be dependent on you if you ask question if you open your mind it, the class can go long otherwise maybe it is it is going to be short right so it depends on you but yes here is the agenda what we are going to learn in coming two to three hours okay so uh, just give me a minute guys okay so that is fine so the agenda number first thing first as i mentioned that this was the same problem the people were dealing with when they were in 1970 not everybody only the person who who uh, only the people who were in charge of these systems right who were thinking along the lines that how two computers are going to talk right then they have developed a model which is known as tcp ip and we are going to talk about that model okay so what is their thinking behind it absolutely the common goal of what we had yesterday and these guys had was to how two computers uh, send messages to each other right and then we are going to see that how they divide this problem because the comp uh, this is a huge problem right maybe complex also 
So let's remove its complexity by dividing the problem into multiple pieces, right? And that is what we are going to see today that yesterday when we were discussing this problem, right? When we were comparing it with the postal office, we divided into three modules. Let's see in how many module TCP IP problem were, uh, <clears throat> was, was divided uh, by the TCP IP inventors, right? <clears throat> Sorry for this. Let's talk about then uh let's let's try to understand the tcp ip model in detail because this is going to be very very important and i know that you have gone through it but here we will be presenting it in slightly different way which could be very very useful in the practical uh, when you when you try to do everything in your lab or the practice what is what is lab what are, what are those practicals definitely i will let you know right then we are literally going to send a packet using this TCP IP model, right? I have a habit of uh, telling packets, but I haven't introduced this term packet, frame, or segment. So do not worry about it. For now, it is just a message. And I will let you know how to send this message over the TCP IP model. And uh, at various modules or the layers, what exactly happens with respect to this message, right? Now, once we discussed all the modules of TCP IP model, the number one thing, the number one problem is from where to start. And we are going to start from network layer, which is the layer three also. What is that? What is inside that? Definitely that is the point uh, of discussion. Uh, that is the discussion point of today's session. Mostly we are going to talk about IP addressing and subnetting. And I know that most of you know about it. If not, then this is the class, right? But the problem is when we when we learn all this thing in a um, in a legacy manner, basically, right? We we always think that uh, bits are way to go. But the problem is, we as a human being, right? We uh, we understand things in the decimal number system, right? And if somebody says, do the calculation in binary, that is not uh, not for us because from the beginning, from the childhood, we have been doing uh, the, the calculation in the decimal number system. That is more natural to us. And that is why we feel problem when we try to solve some of the problem of IP addressing or subnetting. But believe me, here the approach is going to be slightly different. We will be talking about uh, subnetting, but not from the viewpoint of uh, bits, but with the viewpoint of decimal number system and that is going to be pretty easy for you right and then we will introduce a device who can forward the my messages on the basis of that ip address and believe me that device is just nothing but a router right how router is going to work we are going to introduce routers in today's class if time permits we are going to talk about the cables also how to connect these routers and you must be thinking where are the switches switch will come later do not worry about it okay so this is the whole soul agenda if you give me your next two or two and a half hour then you will be pretty good with respect to all these concepts right and believe me uh, whatever we are going to learn in today's and tomorrow's class that is going to be almost 20 percent of your uh, uh, ccna syllabus right so if you give this time to me i promise you that those 20 percent whatever the, uh, cisco says that this is required for passing cisco certified network associate exam it is going to be with you having said that let's move to our next board and before that the question asking criteria is going to be the same the process same if you feel that your question should be answered right now just raise your hand right and <clears throat> i will be taking a break almost every 30 40 minutes so if I see a hand raised there, I will definitely answer your question. Or if you uh, if you do not do that, but you is, is still have a question in your mind, please post that into the, into the question answer session, right? Having said that, let's talk about what and why behind TCP IP model, right? So as I mentioned, computers were there in 1970s, right? And if you follow the World War and basically uh, what happened in 1945, you all should know about the fact that Mr. Alan Turing was successfully able to decode uh, German messages, right? And if you have seen the movie Imitation Games, 
then you i think if if you have that is perfectly fine but if you haven't i am giving you this information that mr allen turing uh, was a mathematician in great britain and he was able to decode the germany's messages right germany was thinking that they are sending their message securely over whatever the medium uh, uh, there was right but mr turing has decoded those messages using a machine which is known as enigma uh, which is actually known to be uh, the first oh, sorry uh, using a computer actually the code whatever mr turing was broken is the code name is enigma right and we were talking about this yesterday that if there is a plain text and if you convert into the cipher text or the encrypted code using replacing x to z or whatever you want right that is going to become your cryptic uh, uh, code and that cryptic code is basically enigma mr turing was able to dec uh, uh, decode that and that is why uh, most of the <clears throat> means if you think if you see the history uh, mr turing was one of the war heroes because because of him this war, uh, war period was reduced by more than one i think one one year right and people were dying every day so <clears throat> if i talk about why i'm uh, telling you all this information the the main point is that mr turing has developed a machine which can which could broke uh, 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 the the enigma code and it was the very first computer which was there right so if i'm saying it was uh, it, it was built before world war around 1939 or 19 uh, around 1943 then you must be uh, thinking that if we had these computers uh, at that point of time, then why nobody thought about it that these can these computers can talk, right? Things happen, but over the period of time, if we move to 1970s or, or 1970 era, the people were thinking that now we have computers which are doing computation for us. If we give them some instruction, they can definitely. Uh, follow our instruction to do some a pretty good mathematics right and now people are thinking that how these two machines or the computers can communicate doesn't matter whether these machines are inside the same room or whether these machines are across the globe right so the whole sole point is how these two computers are going to talk and believe me there are around uh, 10 20 people who were thinking about this problem and <clears throat> Uh, uh, they thought that if we want to build something which which is capable of sending the message from laptop A to laptop B or computer A to computer B, we need to build a system, right? And post office system was there, right? As an example, so they need to build a system, and this system is going to be pretty complex. You never know what can uh, what the message is going to look like, who will uh, address the message, right? And then who will take away this message from the system towards the final uh, uh, final system, maybe the destination. So this was the point of problem at that point of time. So people were thinking that the idea is going to be same. We are going to divide this problem into multiple pieces. Few people are going to work on one piece. Then uh, uh, some uh, group of people can work on other piece. And then we are going to combine this. So this is the normal methodology also, which is followed in uh, uh, development of computer softwares right nobody can develop a complete uh, software if, which is a which which is solving a huge problem right and that is why we have teams here so these people have also decoded uh, these people have also thought about a solution that it is going to be very very interesting and easy to that if we want to uh, if we want to uh, uh, just wait a minute guys okay so my headphone is ha was having some issues with respect to batteries so i need to connect it so sorry for that and here you go now uh, we are back again so if you see here <clears throat> the problem was same and now let's see how tcp ip inventors broke this problem all right so let's move to the new board here you go. Okay. 
So as you can see, the problem was same, how to make two computers talk. And when they broke this problem, they, they, uh, it was resulted into five different little puzzles of the problem, right? This is the problem number one. And if we compare it from that yesterday discussion, the first thing first which they came across is the application layer, right? What is this application layer? The application layer means they decided that there must be something who is going to generate these messages, right? Which messages? The problem was to send messages from computer A to computer B. And these people were thinking that there must be somebody who can generate, who is capable of generating these messages, right? And they have called this layer or the module as the application layer. Why? Because here people are going to develop those applications, maybe your WhatsApp application, maybe your Chrome browser, who is capable enough to generate these messages? Because if we want to send these messages, right? There must be somebody who can uh, who can generate these messages at the first place, right? So the first thing first, application layer, they thought is going to be responsible for, uh, uh, it is going to be responsible for sending the messages, right? It's as simple as, uh, not sending the messages, generating the messages. It is as simple as that, right? Once the messages have been generated, right? There must be a layer who can check whether this destination B is there or not. And believe me, this is the responsibility of transport layer and some protocols under it. I am not saying that every protocol check whether there are, uh, uh, there are, uh, there is a need to check whether the destination is there or not. If I, if I say a word here, the, the protocol, it is same as the document we were writing in the post office analogy, right? Reading this document, everybody can understand what they have to do, right? So there is a transport layer. Actually, its responsibility is going to be that whether the destination is there or not, right? Along with this, it is also going to put some more uh, uh, cool things. See, whatever I say in a single word, it doesn't mean that is the only responsibility of a particular module or particular layer. There are many more uh, things, right? Along with this, uh, this, this modules does, and we are going to see them, right? If we learn them, if we learn the transport layer, believe me, it is going to take maybe, uh, uh, maybe 50 hours for you to understand this one. And that is why we are not going to study the, the most of the things. But yes, if you want to learn it, there, uh, there are so many books available. Even my complete course is available on this transport layer, which is of 12 hours and which is going to be free of cost for you on my website when I give you the access, right? So application layer, transport layer, what are the two, two things, right? And then there is another module which they are calling as a network layer. This module is actually the complete system, which is because this was generating the message, that is perfectly fine. This was checking whether the destination is there or not, that is also fine. But this network layer is actually taking the message from a particular system and delivering it to the end system. It is very, very interesting, guys. And the protocol which does here, the set of rules which does here is known as the IP, right? And if I talk about the transport layer, as I mentioned, one of its duties is to check whether the destination is there or not, whether it's capable of receiving the messages or not, right? That is a documented in a, uh, in a piece of paper which is known as TCP or which is known as the TCP or transmission control protocol, right? And transmission control protocol, we find it the transport layer. So what these guys were doing, these guys were thinking along the same line, right? Uh, that if we break the problem, it is going to easy to develop uh, the solution for it. Application layer is going to generate the messages. Transport layer is going to check that, okay, before sending the message, let me ask whether the destination is there or not. Which protocol does that? The protocol which which uh, does that is the transmission control protocol. Then once we are sure, yes, there is a there is a guy there. Now we can start the communication. We can start sending the data. And there is where network layer comes into picture. It is the complete system, uh, right? Which is actually, it is a complete system which is actually forwarding your messages from one place to other place. It is as simple as that, right? 
Then we came across this data link layer, and this is where I guess there was a question from yesterday, I think from Sanya, right? So network layer has IP, data link layer has MAC, and both are addresses. Why do we need both of them? And as I mentioned, this the answer of this question is not that straightforward. We need to go through some of the uh, theory behind uh, these two layers, right? And do not worry about it. We will be talking about it. So there is a, net, a data link layer two whose responsive. There are some responsibilities of data link layer two, which is which are very very important, right? But as I mentioned that in previous in, in, in yesterday's session also we we thought about that there must be somebody who is going to write the message. Yesterday it was Anjali. Now we have application layer, right? Uh, there must be somebody who can track that whether the destination is there. Right. Yesterday that was module two. Now we have here transport layer and the complete system which is going to deliver these messages is network layer, right? What is this physical layer? And believe me, I deliberately didn't explain anything in the data link layer because it is going to confuse you right now if I do that. But believe me, this is one of the most, uh, one of the not say, uh, one of the crucial piece of the data communication, the data link layer. We will be talking about it. Do not worry about it, but not now. If I do that, it is going to confuse you, right? So let's talk about what is going to be there in the physical layer. As I mentioned, at the end of the day, what these computers are sending, these computers are going to send only the bits, one or zero. And if I consider <clears throat> that there is only one medium, which is the copper wire, then copper wire cannot take these bits, right? Copper wire can take the current or the electric current, but yes, we can uh, we can give the information through through current that if it is five ampere, then the bit is one. If it is nothing, no current, then it is zero. We can always say that. So this is the responsibility of physical layer to encode whatever we want to send and to deal with what is the media over which we are going to send this message. This medium can be the copper wire, this medium can be the wireless, or this medium could be anything else, maybe the optical fiber cables, right? So this medium is going to talk about how we are going to send these bits out of this machine or out of this computer, right? So there is nothing new. Whatever we have discussed yesterday, we are exactly seeing here. No problem, no doubt about it, but yes, Yesterday, somebody asked also that how many layers are, then, uh, are there in the TCP IP model? Believe me, TCP IP inventor doesn't say that there are going to be four models, sorry, four layers or four modules. So by, by the way, guys, if I say modules or if I say layers, these are going to be the same thing, right? So I will be using them interchangeably. So do not uh, worry. If I say module, the meaning is layer, right? <clears throat> And why they are doing these layers, you all know that if we divide the problem, uh, uh, then it is easy to manage. So now TCP IP inventors can easily say that there are 20 people who can work on the application layer, right? They can build some cool application who can generate these messages, right? Then there are maybe 15 people who can build this transport layer whose responsibility is only to take the message and do not send it until it is sure that the destination is there or not, right? These 15 people are brainstorming on this requirement, right? That how to do that. 20 people in application layer is building those applications who can send or receive messages, right? Then maybe this is a pretty, uh, uh, pretty big module, which is the network layer. And maybe we are having 30 people here who can work on this network layer, who can brainstorm how exactly we can, we can send the message. So network layer responsibility is not to create the message. And that is where the magic happens, right? These guys, the 30 people responsibility is that message is done, message is already there. It is developed by the application layer applications, right? And transport layer is also sure that there is a destination. Now, these network engineer responsibility is to take this message from the transport layer and send this message towards the destination. It is as simple as that. What is the role of data link layer? I haven't explained you, but believe me, this is again important. And finally, the physical layer is going to take those messages, right? 
and it knows that whatever the message is, is it is in the form of 1010. It needs to go out. And if it needs to go out, then it needs to go out via some medium. And it is responsible for that, right? So this is the whole soul TCP IP model for you. These guys have broken this problem into five pieces. But yes, we need to understand this individual pieces one by one. Where to start? I will let you know. But yes, the whole soul networking, because we all know that TCP IP is the brain behind our internet. If you see, my device is capable of doing internet. He can access the internet. It means that on this device, TCP IP model is working. All these layers are there on the device. It is as simple as that, right? So if we if we have TCP IP everywhere, right? And this is the whole soul brain behind networking or computer network. Believe me, we need to be master in this TCP IP model. We need to understand most of its layer. Most of the guys say is that we should be good if we are good with respect to network layer, data link layer, uh, or the physical layer. I would say no. We need to understand transport layer too. And we need to understand some part of application layer too. And the reason is if you have this knowledge of almost all the modules, then basically you can think the complete picture. Otherwise, no otherwise not and this is the problem with the current network engineers that they do not go above and beyond network layer they say network layer is for engineers transport layer is for application guys this is not true at least we should understand what is there in the transport layer and believe me again it is easy so the whole soul point as i mentioned tcp inventors had the same problem they divided the problem and now let's see where they have implemented all these layers right so my first question when i go and ask to anybody who is new and who says that they have little knowledge about tcp ip so i ask them where this tcp ip model is right they everybody says that the tcp ip model means these five layers right application layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and the physical layer. I agree with that. These are the five layers. But where these layers are, can we see the code? Can we see where it has implemented, right? So the most of the guys get confused here, right? And uh, they do not know where we can see. But believe me, if on any device, maybe it's your mobile phone, it's your uh, uh maybe your ipad or android pad whatever it is right or your laptop right here or your pc anything right if you have that then all of these layers application layer transport layer network layer data link layer and the physical layer everything is implemented in that right you can literally check that and i will showcase you right so if someone asks that where this TCP IP model is, where we can see all this layer, it is right there on any device who, is who has the capability of accessing internet because internet is working on TCP IP, right? If you are capable of sending a message from here to any other device which you are in current world, then it means that your system is using this model, which is TCP IP. All of these layers are implemented right there into your laptop, PC, or whatever the handle device you have, which is accessing the internet. It is as simple as that, right? But again, what we need to uh, study, right, for this CCNA course, I'll tell you uh, how much time we are going to spend on every layer. Transport layer, I would say, uh, if we spend maybe 1.5 hours, it is going to be more than enough, right? But yes, this is the thing network layer, which is doing the heavy lifting, which is actually sending the packet from one place to other place, right? And th there we need to maybe spend a complete day on the network layer where we are going to study the protocols which are inside it right as i mentioned that if there is a system right there was a system of sorting of those envelopes in a particular office right 
This network layer is also doing the same thing. It is receiving the message from the transport layer, this M, right? And then it send it across. So it means that it understand whatever the IP address or whatever the address written on this message. And then basically on the basis of that address, it can forward these messages, right? So there must be some protocols, some documents written here, which is followed by this module, right? And these standards, these rules on the basis of which network layer work is known as the protocol. And the protocol which run on the network layer is IP, which is known as the internet protocol, right? Interesting. And if I, if I talk about the transport layer, which is checking the presence of the destination and whether we can send the message to it. And it has many more responsibilities apart from whatever I said, right? So there are written documents on the transport layer too, that if you want to check the presence of the destination, then basically you are going to use the protocol, which is known as TCP. But somebody says that I do not want to check the presence of destination, right? I do not want. I do not want, I, I just need to send the message. If the destination is not accepting, that is perfectly fine. I have, I do not want to test whether this uh, destination is there or not. And you must be wondering who wants to do that. If there is a solution uh, we have, which can definitely check the presence of the destination or the recipient, we would like to do that. But believe me, there are some applications which do not have such requirement. And I will prove it to you. If you do not have such, such requirement, if you do not want to check the presence of the destination, then there is another set of instructions or set of rules, which is known as UDP, right? This is transmission control protocol. This is user datagram protocol. Till now, you just have understood only one difference between TCP and UDP. TCP actually checks whether there is a presence of uh, uh, destination. UDP doesn't do that, right? This is the difference, but why on earth anybody doesn't want to know that whoever I'm sending the message is there or not. But yes, I am saying there is a complete justification behind UDP. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been there. It is as simple as that, right? Let's talk about network layer. As you know, the network layer is actually the IP. <clears throat> and there is uh, a data link layer too, right? What? What it does, believe me, we are going to spend approximately two hours or two to point five hours on this one, right? Or maybe more than uh, approximately three hours on data link layer two. Physical layer and the cabling, uh, it should be uh, good if we can spend two hours, right? Then why I'm not spending any hour in application, right? Uh, probably we can talk about it, right? So if you have seen that if somebody is good with respect to application and transport layer, they are also good in terms of security, securing your messages, right? If somebody is good with respect to network and data link layer, they say that uh, we are expert network engineer. So network engineer, security engineer. But as you see that the today's world is actually changing a lot. If you are only uh, a network engineer, it doesn't make sense. You should understand few things in that uh, security, network security. You should understand a uh, uh, few things in cloud. Maybe uh, you also understand something in how to code or how to program, right? If you have that, then you are relevant into today's world. And that is why CCNA syllabus almost have everything. It has security, it has wireless, it has, and it is up to you how much deep, deep you want to go. But CCNA or Cisco Certified Network Associate make you ready for today's world. It is as simple as that. So overall, the whole sole point of this complete course is to understand all these five layers. You must be wondering where my OSI, uh, OSI model is. OSI model was there, but that is just for a reference, right? I'm not saying that's not, not a good model. That is one of the best model. If we have implemented internet on the basis of that, we would have saved a lot of time. We would have saved a lot of efforts, which we are putting right now in making this TCP IP model to work with current conditions, current situations, right? OSI model was a futuristic model. 
and you must be wondering that if that is the case then why everything is not on uh, osi right why internet is not running on osi and welcome to the practical world it doesn't mean that if something is pretty good it is going to be everywhere right i'm not saying tcp ip is not good at the end of the day internet is running on that but there is an interesting story that why osi model was not here why internet is not running on the osi model so if you see my website there is a series there which talk about uh, such questions why do we need mac address if we have ip address why there is no uh, osi right why everything is running on tcp ip if you are curious about it there is a history behind it right so just have a look at it and there is an interesting story which you would love to uh, love to read having said that let's talk about let's understand tcp ip model in detail and here you go so now the same thing but i have included another laptop here right i just want to understand this tcp ip model more right so i have this laptop a i have this laptop b this is going to be my source this is going to be my destination we have included these two terms yesterday there is no doubt about it right and now what is this guy this is the network cloud what is the meaning of this network cloud because we do not know anything about it and that is what i have written this cloud i do not know what is inside that but the whole sole point of this course is to just look into this cloud just understand this cloud also for now it is just a cloud for us right but this cloud has interesting property it says that if you send a message towards me this cloud is saying that if anybody is uh, send a message towards me with the address written on it right and this address should be the one which i understand right which is the part of the system if you can do that then this is my responsibility this is the responsibility of this cloud i do not know what is there and believe me at the end of this class you should be figuring out what should be in this cloud but for now you only know that we have this network cloud which is saying that if anybody can send a message to me and if there is a address written on it which i can understand then it is my responsibility to deliver this message the complete message to the destination suppose the address here is the address for laptop b and if this for laptop b then this is the responsibility of this network cloud to send this message to laptop b how it is going to do i do not know but this guy is claiming this network cloud is claiming if you send a message to me just write an address i can forward the message on the basis of that address it is just like the postman right who is receiving the message he is going to see the address on the letter and he is going to deliver the address right okay this is perfectly fine so is this part of the system absolutely it is going to be the part of the system it is your actually the network right suppose now these laptop a and laptop b are not nearby the laptop a is right here right and maybe in delhi right or maybe in bangalore and laptop b is in say delhi suppose do you think that there is going to be a single cable which is going into your laptop and connecting directly to laptop b no we are talking about 2500 kilometers everybody right it should not be the case that there is a dedicated cable for you. for your computer and the computer which is present in delhi so this is out of the question right it would be good that somebody who is huge who can build this network for me i'm not sure how they have built this cloud but they are saying and who is they they are service provider maybe airtel jio reliance whatever right british telecom i'm not sure but they are saying believe me we have built such kind of network i cannot give a end to end 
cable to you, but I can give you the feeling that you two guys are connected, right, over me. That is the case. Then the job of this laptop A is to use this application layer to generate a message and application layer is responsible for that. If laptop A wants to send a message to laptop B, it can generate this message using this application. Maybe the application name is Google Chrome, Firefox, or maybe your WhatsApp application, right? It is going to create this message M, right? Then it is going to be delivered to the transport layer before sending it to anywhere else. Transport layer is doing some magic over it. It is putting some data on top of this message. This data is pretty small as compared to message because now the transport layer wants to check whether there is a destination or the uh, destination present or not, right? And that is why it is putting some more information on it. And now this message is going to be delivered to network layer. If it sees that there is a destination, I'm talking about TCP exclusive here, exclusively, sorry. Now what is going to happen? This is the information put by transport layer. Then we have this message. We have this information by transport layer. And then the network layer is going to put the address, right? Address is B or laptop B, which could be understood by this network cloud. It is as simple as that, right? And now I'm not going to talk about data link layer because it is also putting some more information. But at the end of the day, whatever we are seeing here, it is 10101001, whatever, right? At the end of the day, physical layer is actually connecting to this cloud, which is capable of understanding these addresses and forward these messages. Whatever we have here, right? The message is going to be delivered here. The network layer is going to see, okay, the message is for me because the address is written for me. Then the transport layer is responsible to see, okay, this message is actually for the application WhatsApp because that is the information what I'm giving here. And then the message is delivered to the correct application, maybe for the WhatsApp. It is as simple as that, right? Interesting. But the whole sole point is how this system is working what should be the IP address I should place here, right? What actually transport layer is doing? I have explained transport layer in one just single word that this is TCP. It is checking the presence of only the, it is checking the presence of destination. But is it what it only does? No, absolutely not. Okay. It is doing much more things than that. As simple as that, right? So before moving further, or let me co complete the uh, one more board where I will actually showcase you how communication happens over the TCP IP, how we can send the message over the TCP IP, which is just the repetition, but in good graphics. So we have computer A here, we have computer B here, or laptop A, laptop B here. And there is an application, what is the name of the application? Maybe the Google Chrome. It has generated data, right? And if I am making a rectangular piece, just try to understand at the end of the day, we are talking about the bits, right? So we need something to showcase this, right? So if I say data, the meaning is 100 or whatever the bits we have, right? So this data, whatever is generated by the application is forwarded towards the transport layer, right? Transport layer whose main responsibility is to check basically the, if it is using the TCP, it is main responsibility is to check whether the destination is there or not, but it has some more responsibility, right? The first thing first is it is going to take this data because it might be the case the data is huge, right? Maybe you are sending the message, hi, how are you? And this particular unit of information that can be sent can take only hi. Then it means that you are going to create another unit of information, another rectangular box in which you are going to write how. 
then another rectangular box which where you can write how are you it is as simple as that so basically this transport layer is going to receive the data in the form of 1010 right and it could be the continuous data for example if you have seen the bucket and if somebody if there is a water right continuously coming from the the tap then basically it is as good as we are talking about the continuous stream of water and if this application is generating huge data then transport layer is actually receiving that huge data in the form of one and zeros right so what is the duty of the transport layer the first thing first is it actually create if we have so much of data like this right it will say i am going to send this in a particular segment and this in the particular segment i am using a word which is called segment because i am segmenting whatever i am receiving from the application it is as simple as that because i cannot send everything at once right maybe this the physical whatever the capacity of this laptop is to send maybe 1500 bytes at, at at one time and we are generating the data maybe in kilobytes i cannot send kilobytes over a 1500 byte a medium right which can send only 1500 byte at once it is very very interesting so that is why application layer divides this in data maybe in 1500 bytes say right and then uh, <clears throat> But then it is going to put some information right why because you have just divided the continuous stream of the data there must be somebody or some information that how you are dividing this data right and that information is going to be placed here in this little blue box that i have divided this data from here to here and from here to here this is the uh, this is the segment number one this is segment number two so that if any segment gets missing the destination can be known that this segment is particularly missing for example if you are generating if application is generating five uh, it's a huge data and transport layer has segmented it into number one number two number three then the meaning here is that you are putting some information on this data so that the destination can understand that yes data one is received data two is received that and maybe data three is not received so it can ask about it right so i am talking about more and more responsibilities of transport layer transport layer is carrying this continuous stream of water of bits from the application layer it is segmenting them and putting some information right and generally we call this information as headers why headers because previously we had only data which we have segmented from the application and maybe we have another data another unit and again we are putting the tcp right header header means it contains the data so that at the when it receives at the destination basically destination gets enough information and believe me this is the transport layer who is going to put uh, uh, one more information that whatever that this data is this data is for google chrome application or this data is for whatsapp application suppose it has written this this is for whatsapp application right transport layer job is done it is received the data checked whether the destination is there or not put some information in the tcp in the form of header and now it is passing this complete information to the network layer network layer is responsible for putting the address and that is why it is putting its own header which is known as the ip right header is just some information and you all know what we are going to put here in the network layer we are going to put here address right what is the address of the destination if we cannot put it then basically that system the cloud system which is between this laptop a and laptop b is not going to deliver it is as simple as that and that is why in the ip header it is going to put some addresses 
this address is just like same which we were discussing in the postal this address is going to have some logic which we are going to talk about again data link layer network layer is going to pass this data to data link layer it will do some magic but what is that magic i do not want to include it there is going to be complete three hour session maybe day, tomorrow day after tomorrow on this right but let's leave it at the end of the day this network layer whatever the data is it is going to be over the physical and this is the cable guys right the copper cable and your data is flowing in the form of the electric current but i have showcased you the bits bits are not going to flow but the information can be uh, sent to the destination using the electric currents or the voltage signals and what is going to happen at the net uh, destination side destination and again i'm leaving the data link layer as it is if i talk about the network layer here it is going to receive this complete packet of course it is going to check that yes in the ip header i can find that this packet is for me because the because ip packet contain my address how this address is going to look i will definitely let you know but for now whatever the address of ve it is going to be placed by the network layer and now the destination is checking that yes it is for me and then it is forwarding whatever remaining to the transport layer so just try to understand the transport layer is gearing the data where it can seize its own header network layer it's uh, receiving the data which where it can see the ip header it doesn't care about what is inside right it is a responsibility of transport layer so transport layer is going to see this the tcp header is there it is going to check the information is it uh, in it just like network layer check the information in ip transport layer is going to check this information in tcp header where it is going to find that this particular message is for whatsapp application and there are so many application going to run here if that is the case the transport layer will deliver this application to the whatsapp right and the entire journey of the packet is completed so at every layer which is working independent of its topmost layer why because application layer duty was to create the message it has done that now transport layer is uh, duty was to chunk those messages put its own header so that at the destination it is known that for which data for which application this message is for uh, then it is going to pass this information to network layer network layer is going to put the address into it and send over the physical layer yes i am not talking about data link deliberately right so by the way guys this is known as your l4 which is layer 4 network layer is l3 if somebody if your seniors here say we are talking about l3 then you should understand he's talking about network layer if somebody is saying that this is the problem at layer 4 you should understand that we are talking about transport layer if somebody says that is an application layer problem or layer 5 problem or layer 7 problem right because i will talk to you I, I, I will give a brief introduction about how OSI and TCP IP are, are interrelated, right? If somebody is saying it's a layer two problem, you should understand we are talking about data link layer. If somebody is saying that routers work at layer three, it means that you should understand routers work at network layer. It is as simple as that. Now, I just want to stop for a moment here right if you can please ask your question your doubt it is going to be great mr dhawal do we have any question now today yes vishnu there is one question from hemant mm -hmm. which i have already answered but just wanted to take your views as well so the question is how does transport layer comes to know that destination is present or not perfect okay so uh Thank you so much. First thing first, Mr. Hammond, for asking this. And believe me, there is going to be a complete, uh, I think, one-hour class on the this TCP, how basically it does that. But to give you a brief introduction, suppose we have two system here, system number A, system number B, right? And these are miles apart. And before sending any message, your application layer has created this message M, right? 
and now it is delivered to the transport layer right to see whether this destination is there or not right <clears throat> so basically before delivering this message right transport layer take control over everything that this message is not going to go anywhere unless i am sure that the destination is there and it is talking to the transport layer at the destination you must be thinking if that is the case then how can these two guys uh, these two guys can talk these two guys are going to be talk, talking over the same medium but this message is not going message will be there into the system with, with the system a right now the control is taken by this tcp or the transport layer and it is sending an initial message towards the b and that message is going to go over this a network right the cloud whatever we are talking about it is asking that mr b you are there and if it acknowledge it then we says that yes that is there right and this is a, a what i say that the super high uh, version of tcp and i have explained only this problem in 12 hours in the website itself so if you have registered on the website, Mr. Hemant. You will be getting the access for the complete website. There is a course called TCP from scratch, which is actually talking about it, right? And as because we do not have much time, we have only 30, 36 hours and we have to cover more. I cannot just give this 12 hour session on this, but believe me, whatever i am explaining in the same tune in the same whiteboarding i have done for the tcp from scratch but yes somewhere in this course we will be talking about tcp which is solving the problem right if i give you one more clear example right as i mentioned that this tcp is also responsible that if something get missed suppose you are sending these three messages and TCP says this is segment number one, this is segment number two, this is segment number three, right? And TCP is deliberately writing this sequence number on these messages. And the reason is once, suppose at the end of the day, these messages, in, uh, these messages are passed over this cloud and this cloud can drop packet. And I will let you know how this cloud is going to drop the packet too. It can, it cannot. Sometime it could, right? So support this cloud has dropped this packet number two and at the receiver end message number one is received and message number three is received right then the transport layer is pretty clever enough to know that that second is not there and it is this much simple right if you have heard of the concept of sequence number in transmission control protocol this is the problem they want to solve right if you have heard about the tcp three-way handshake tcp three-way handshake is just to check whether you are there hello mr destination and if it acknowledge then you come to know that that is there right maybe the destination also wants to know you are there or not interesting right and basically i'm not saying this is the only purpose of three-way handshake three-way handshake some other purposes also right i hope i have answered the question but uh if there are any other question mr dhawal uh yeah vishnu so <clears throat> it's it's kind of a follow up on the answer which i gave to hemant mm -hmm. so uh the question from sanya is if network layer gives us the destination address mm -hmm. then how can tcp contact the destination first oh this is uh, again very very interesting question so believe me uh when you have this whatsapp Let's consider an example of this. Uh, again, I need to whiteboard this. And I'm impressed that we are talking, right? We are asking question. And this is a very, very good question, right? So if I say that we have this computer here, the computer is A, and we all know that there are five layers implemented here, right? The first thing first, when we are generating the message here, and suppose the application name is WhatsApp, and he is generating the message don't you think that this whatsapp knows that where you are talking to whom you are talking in your whatsapp right there are so many contacts you have 
you select a contact and then after that you type start top, uh, typing right it is not like that you randomly type and send it to everybody right if you are if you are if you want to send a message to a particular person which is maybe say uh, rahul right you are taking the contact so it means that this whatsapp application know where exactly it wants to send the message or if we are talking about the google chrome browser right the first thing first if from your chrome browser you want to open say cisco.com you should understand that you should know first thing first that where exactly with whom i am talking and believe me the cisco.com is actually the address i'll prove you later it means that application knows that where exactly they are talking right so along with the message if you have done some coding right if you have not that is perfectly fine along with the message it is saying that this message is for whatsapp application plus i want to talk to cisco.com or maybe maybe uh, uh, and here is the ip address also then you must be thinking that if application is giving all this information then why do we have the network layer here so that is what i am saying network layer is responsibility is not just to put the ip address right and of course it is going to take the ip address from the application application knows where it is taking you knows if anjali sending a particular message to rahul anjali knows where it is sending the network layer doesn't know about it right because it comes after transport layer right <clears throat> but yes these layers transport layer when it get the message from it it also get some more information but application layer doesn't care about what should i what should the uh, what should i where i should place the this address how this address is going to be interpreted right application layer is just getting the message but yes it also inform the lower layers like transport layer and network layer that boss i want to talk to mr rahul at this address right but yes this is the responsibility of the transport layer to put that this message is from whatsapp and this is the responsibility of network layer to put that this message is from whatsapp and also it is going toward this address right because these guys deals with the address right but where exactly they are getting at the from the first place they should know that where this message is going right and this is informed by the application layer maybe at the beginning it looks like confusing but yes application layer is only deals with creating the message and understanding the message at the end at the remote side of this application right whatever the transport layer says that i am sending some bits to you these bits are for whatsapp application it is as simple as that right okay so yes at the first place it looks confusing that if uh, application layer and i totally agree with you that if application layer knows everything then why can't we merge these three layers into one layer if we can and we surely would have done that uh, uh sanya but the problem is just try to understand if we what is the principle of uh, <clears throat> creating a solution right if you can break a brick problem into multiple pieces then you can probably solve it right if only application layer is doing the duty of the transport as well as network which it can definitely it can no doubt about it the system is going to be more uh, complex right because here it is very simple just create a message right do not worry about it transport layer is going to take care that where this message should be gone right i just need to tell him that this message is for whatsapp and the ip address or the address is this one then the transport layer is going to put some information and that is what i mentioned that transport layer this duty is not only right to check whether the destination is there it is at so many responsibilities right and that is where the most of the confusion comes similarly the network layer responsibility is to put ip address and yes it could be the confusion it could be confusing at the first place but we need to understand that we are trying to solve a big problem which should be modular 
right? Which should have different responsibilities. Okay. If you consider this with the post office analogy, when Anjali was posting the message, right? She has that message, right? But when she put this message into the envelope, it is the responsibility of Anjali too to tell the world that where exactly it is going, right? So it says that it is going to Rahul. If we mention Rahul, then basically who will be delivering it to the Rahul, the transport layer, because this is just like a WhatsApp application, right? And then she also write the address, right? Who is writing it? Anjali. And who is Anjali? Application if we compare, right? But that doesn't mean that Anjali is going to deliver this letter. No, Anjali only knows that she has a letter. She needs to put it into the envelope and then give it to that uh, uh, to the other layer. And maybe then your transport layer comes into picture. The system, you remember? We were talking about the system who is going to check it. That is actually your TCP. And then you know that there is another system which is taking this envelope, moving via the aeroplane, via the trains, via the roads. That is another system which is your network layer. It is as simple as that. Right? Definitely Anjali is part of the system. Anjali is part of the postal office service. So application is. Definitely this module 2 which is checking the presence of destination was part of postal service and here we have by the way guys this module 2 was not there the transport layer is not there in the postal service right interesting anybody else anybody else having any question Dhawal? uh yeah vishnu next question is from ansi mm -hmm. uh, uh, in ad hoc network mm -hmm. when two computers directly communicating which with each other mm -hmm. through copper cables mm -hmm. Then what is the role of router and switches in this type of communication? Amazing. That, that's a, one of the best questions. But yes, you are just yeah. going uh, ahead. We will be yes. we will be solving this doubt. Uh, and who has asked this question? Dhawal? Anshi. 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 Thank you so much for the question. And do not worry about it. We will be clearing and your doubt. Second part uh -huh. of the question is, did all these layers mm -hmm. present in sender and receiver's computer. Absolutely. This type of community. Absolutely. See, just try to understand, if there is no layer in the destination, then how actually it is going to make sense to him, right? When we send, when this packet comes, which is having the message, which is having the TCP header, which is having the IP header, when this guy receives this, right? And if it doesn't have the network layer, because network layer can only understand the IP address, right? And if it doesn't have, then who is going to understand this, right? We need somebody here too, right? Which can see that, yes, there is IP address. This is for me. And now I can forward it to the transport layer. Transport layer is there to see that, okay, <coughs> that this is the message, which is having the TCP header. I can understand the TCP header. And in TCP header, it is written that this message is for WhatsApp application or Google Chrome application. It is as simple as that. Right? Any Anything else, Mr. Dhawal? No, Vishnu. Perfect. And thank you so much for asking some good questions. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And whatever comes to your mind, and I, I, am, I am not saying that everything is going to be clear as it is, right? Because we are talking about a huge system. It is very, very difficult for me also as to where to start, right? It is not going to be the case that basically we will take the CCNA one by one topic and explain you. It is not going to make sense, but yes, the whole sole point is to cover most of the things from the CCNA, right? So we have developed this approach that we will go this way. Maybe my approach is wrong. But yes, this is what I could, means if somebody has taught me when I was starting my career, it would have been very, very easy for me and for maybe for Dhawal, maybe for Rohit, for everybody. Because the there are multiple pieces of the information along with the computer networks, right? And we were just trying to gather all this information from, I mean, if you talk about 13, 14 years back, right? But if somebody has given us this information in this specific manner, 
at that point of time it would have make more sense right so maybe my approach could have been wrong but it is the approach it is whatever approach i had but i'm pretty sure that once we are done with initial three or four sessions right then the complete puzzle is going to make more sense and i i'm saying if you can get only 5% of this box uh, uh, board i am saying only 5% then i am pretty happy with that right if you get only 5% and if you are getting more than that it is amazing right because i only expect if you are a no nothing uh, learner right if you do not have any idea about computer networking and after yesterday's and today's session if you can just make 5% out of this board this is just amazing you are an amazing learner because it is my responsibility because at the end of this course this picture is going to make more sense for you do not worry about it we will actually going to see this packet i will show you how this packet looks right where exactly the transport layer is putting its header we will see we will look into this header also what exactly transport layer puts there and when we see when we visualize something then it is going to be uh, then it is going to stay more uh, or you can say it is going to uh, be staying more with us for a longer period of time right having said that let's talk about what we have the next board is right and now here is the confusion from where to start we have and you must be thinking we have already started but yes right and and believe me this is just the beginning and i am i am i am calling this after one i think four and a half hours of a study and here is the confusion from where to start whether should i start from application layer or should i start from transport layer there are going to be confusion we have confusion in the mind of sanya right she is saying that if uh why basically ip addressing at network layer because <clears throat> because ip addressing is introduced in network layer then how this guy is able to know about the address so much confusion right but yes that is why tcp ip is not built by one person so that you can understand it maybe by reading only few things right this is developed by many people over many years and that is why the information is huge right the best thing to start is according to me is the network layer because it is going to interact somewhat with the network layer sorry transport layer it is going to interact somewhat with data link layer and then basically we will be learning these three layers in conjunction along when when we start the network layer it is as simple as that so from where to begin we are beginning from the network layer and the most crucial piece of the network layer is addressing we need to address if a computers want to communicate to computer b right how we are going to send this message unless we know the address and this address is going to be the same as our postal service so now from now on your real technical study is going to begin whatever we have discussed till now if you have gotten maybe 5 10% of it i am more than happy with that right anybody else uh yeah vishnu just one last question mm -hmm. uh maybe this is a little bit advanced at this point of time Perfect. but just to uh, you know understand the question mm -hmm. uh, we know that ask that when two computers are communicating over the internet mm -hmm. then what is the role of physical address will it change as moving through different networks or remain static uh, yeah this is again uh, the question which we are going to take care in the advanced section but yes mr who is asked this question Uh, Vinod. So Vinod, but if you are curious, because the whole sole prerequisite of this uh, course is that you should be curious, and I I can see that there are a lot of curious people here. If you can't hold your horses, I would say, create the account on my website. Right? I have specifically mentioned there in a particular course 
that why do we need the physical address, which is also known as MAC address, if we already have IP address, or vice versa. If we have MAC address, why do we need IP? It is as simple as that, right? It is going to be discussion across uh, over one and a half hours, but it is going to be worthwhile for you, right? It doesn't mean that I'm not going to cover it here. I will be covering it, but not as in detail. And that is why I'm saying that if you combine whatever the 30 to 35 hours, whatever we are going to spend here, along with some of the cool courses on the website, right? Then your knowledge is going to be great, right? Otherwise, CCNA level knowledge can be achieved from these maybe 30, 35 hours, whatever we are going to spend here. Okay. Having said that, any other question, Mr. Dhawal, we have? Uh, no, Vishnu. So I think uh, just to summarize, right, mm -hmm. his query, so it will change, correct? Uh, actually, it doesn't make sense. He has some... Uh -huh. It he doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. It doesn't make sense, Vinod, to let you know, right? It is going to be confusing for other, right? MAC address is going to be changed, means if we, if I say IP address is going to be remaining same. And, and if others doesn't have any clue about whatever I just talked, that MAC change, IP doesn't, that is perfectly fine. Because this is the yes. most simple things which we are going to learn, right? This is the most intuitive things also, that why MAC is going to change, why IP doesn't have to change, right? But if you doesn't understand why behind it, there is no point of explanation, right? But yes, to answer your question, Mac is going to change per hop. IP is not going to. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? I don't see a hand raise. Means nobody uh, 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 has any question in their mind. Means if you have, if you do not want to write, you can uh, raise your hand also. That is going to be perfectly fine. No hand raises. That is okay. And I could see that right now we have. We are one hour and 16 minutes. I do not know that how couldn't I notice this, but yes, there is a time to take break. Short uh, break. Yeah, this is 10.52 now, and we are going to meet at 11.10. It is going to be 18 minutes break, guys, right? Uh, maybe it is going to be only one break in today's uh, session. So let's take uh, uh, what I say, 11. 11 15 we are going to meet okay perfect